going to it's six o'clock, so we're going to head and call this meeting to order. Uh, Dr. Salasat. Mr. Meyer, members of the board and members of the audience, this evening we have students here to help lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. And at this time I'm going to call Mr. Oscar de la Rosa, principal at Las Yescas, to introduce us to the students from his campus. Good evening, Mr. President, members of the board, Dr. Salazar, and public audience. My pleasure to introduce a couple of our Longhorns from Las Yescas, starting with Ian Dominguez. It's Ian is the son of Juan Dominguez and Claudia Valdez. He's a fifth grade student at Las Yescas. <laughs> Ian is a very bright young little boy. He has been on the A honor roll all year. In fact, Ian has been on the A honor roll for five straight years in a row. Ian has... O Ian has only missed one day of school in the last five years. <laughs> Ian does not have a favorite class. He likes all his classes equally. His hobby is video games, and he's an expert at Minecraft. Ian is sure to be very successful in middle school and high school, as he always takes his time to complete his work. Ian does not know where he would like to attend college, but he knows he'd like to either be a video game designer or a computer technician. Ian. <laughs> Next we have Sasha Luna. Sasha is a fourth grade student at Las Yescas. She's the daughter of Lorena and Hilario Luna. Sasha is in the A honor roll and is actively engaged in multiple clubs at our campus. This school year, she was in art club, robotics, and participated in EAE oral reading. Sasha's hobbies include swimming, playing volleyball, but most of all, she enjoys crafting. Her aspiration is to become a craft artist. In the future, she would like to have her own business. She would like to attend the University of Texas at Austin. Sasha Luna. Thank you, Mr. De La Rosa. At this time, we welcome Dr. Swantner from Resaca Middle School. Hi. Good evening, Mr. Maya, school board members, and Dr. Salazar. I'm very pleased this evening to bring to you two of Resaca's finest seventh graders. May I present Ms. Clarissa Langoria. Clarissa is the daughter of Joe and Esmeralda Langoria. She is a seventh grader and a former Rancho Verde rattlesnake. She has excelled during her time at Resaca. She's involved in various activities such as UIL, sports, band, student council secretary, and member of our National Junior Honor Society. She was also voted seventh grade Valentine Sweetheart this year. She is an awesome communicator, our Clarissa. She enjoys spe speaking in public, assisting with morning schooling announcements. She's one of our newscast broadcasters out there in the mornings. And mostly, she's, uh, most recently, she volunteered for the first annual Los Fresnos Autism Awareness Fair and served as master of ceremonies for the first annual Risaco Middle School Health Fair. We're very proud to present to you Clarissa Langoria. <laughs> and next I have Ms. Haley Martin, who's also a seventh grader with us at Risaco Middle School. She's been with uh, Los Fresnos since kinder and has enjoyed every year in our district. Haley was accepted into the GT program and has uh, been traveling to Tennessee to represent Los Fresnos Elementary Destination Imagination Team and complete, uh, competed in the finals. She's also a school athlete. She and, and Clarissa are really awesome volleyball players. Uh, her favorite subjects are math and science. Go girls. And at home, Haley enjoys reading and spending time with her new puppy, Gizmo. So I would like to once again introduce Haley Martin. Ladies and gentlemen, these students are here to help lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Will everyone please rise for the pledge?
parents of our students who helped us with the pledge please stand to be recognized for standing huh? Ms. Garcia, could you assist us with roll call, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Jesus Amaya? Present. Mr. Leonel Garza? Present. Ms. Sandra Garcia, I am here. Mr. Martin Castillo? Present. Mrs. Darlene Peterson? Present. Mr. Ray Farias? Present. Mr. Ruben Trevino will not be in attendance tonight. Dr. Gonzalo Salazar? Ms. Priscilla De La Garza, our counsel? Thank you, Ms. Garcia. Dr. Salazar, can you continue with our district recognition, please? Mr. Maya, members of the board, each month we set time aside to recognize and, and celebrate the achievements of our students, and today uh, we have a long list. We, it's, it's been a banner year, and so uh, we won't, won't waste any time. I'd like to invite Ms. Uh, our, our counselor, Ms. Grenier, to come to the lectern and introduce us to our school sponsors, who will then introduce us to our students. Ms. Grenier. Mr. President, members of the board, Dr. Salazar, thank you for allowing us, the Career and Technical Education Department, the opportunity to showcase our students' hard work and dedication throughout the school year. I am Selena Grenier, CTE counselor, and it is my privilege to stand before you on behalf of Mr. Ronnie Rodriguez, CTE director, who could not be with us today. Through their hard work and practice and competitions during the school year, our students have grown with knowledge to help be leaders in the district and the community. Special thank you to our devoted teachers and students for such an outstanding school year. First up is Ms. Connie Garza, our Business Professionals of America sponsor. Mr. President, members of the board, Dr. Salazar, good evening. My name is Connie Garza. I am a CTE teacher and BPA sponsor. It is a privilege to present the Los Fresnos High School members of Business Professionals of America that advance in their different competitions. Business Professionals of America is a nationally recognized student organization that provides alignment to both business and information technology national standards. BPA's programs provide valid assessments in four different areas of study administration support, information technology, financial services, management, marketing, human resources. Students compete and are recognized at the different levels, regional, state, and national level. This year, our students competed in the regional level uh, where more than 750 students participated from the Lower Valley. Several of our students advanced to the state uh, leadership conference that was hosted in Corpus Christi uh, with over 4,800 students competing from across the great state of Texas for the opportunity to advance to national leadership conference, which was held in Grapevine, Texas this past week with over 5,600 members competing from across the United States. It is with pride then I present to you Corbin Garza, that's Corbin Garza, who, who won first place as state qualifier at the regional level in computer network technology, first place state qualifier in information technology concepts, and third place state qualifier in computer programming concepts. At the state level, he earned second place as national qualifier in computer networking technology and fifth place in information technology concepts. He attended the National BPA Leadership Conference where he obtained his fourth Microsoft Technology Associate Certification. Corbin is the only student at Los Fresnos High School who, is this, who has obtained industry-recognized MTA certifications all under the mentorship and, and coaching of Mr. Albert Duron. <laughs> Next is Mr. Aldo Antonio, who earned second place in Visual Basic C-Sharp programming 
at this NS uh, state qualifier. And then last but not least is Jackie, uh, Jacqueline Franco, who were in third place in the Fundamentals Desktop Publishing as state qualifier. <laughs> not present today uh, is Yvonne Mercado, who were in first place in the Advanced Word Processing Skills as state qualifier and sixth place at state national alternate. And Tony Weaver, who were in circuit second place um, as state qualifier in PC um, servicing and troubleshooting. Thank you all for your continued support. This is proof that what we do here shapes the world. We have our parents in the audience. If you would please stand. I saw some proud parents, big smiles. Next we have Ms. Edna Sanchez, one of our future Farmers of America sponsor. Good evening, Mr. President, members of the board, and Dr. Salazar. First of all, thank you for having us here to uh, go ahead and announce um, the Los Fresnos FFA horse judging team. I'm not sure if you guys have ever heard of an FFA horse judging team, but uh, these young ladies have been part of that team for the past three years, and I hope it continues when we leave. Um, I'd like to introduce Claire Charrington. <laughs> Nadine Fernandez. <laughs> and Allison Watts. Now these young ladies placed first in district, third out of 23 teams at area, and they qualified for state and placed 35th out of 75 teams. Ms. Charrington placed 16th out of 346 individuals, making her one of the top competitors. So I'm very proud of these young ladies. We did travel to Lubbock, went to Texas Tech. They did an outstanding job. Unfortunately, Los Fresnos FFA will be losing all three this year. They are seniors, and I'm very proud of them. Um, so here you go, these young ladies. If we may have the parents of these three young ladies in the audience, if you could please stand to be recognized. Up next, we have Ms. Melissa Garcia announcing our Los Fresnos High School and Los Fresnos United Health Occupation Students of America. Good afternoon. For our HOSA competition, um, we have Clarissa Tudon. She competed in health science issues. Josue Atkinson, <laughs> health care issues, and from our high school we had Jonathan Jenny, who is also one of our national qualifiers. And we also have Nicholas Sanchez, who competed in research, persuasive speaking, and writing. <laughs> if we have the parents of these young four students in the audience, could you please stand to be recognized?
complete our student achievement and recognition is Ms. Jessica Bunyas and Ms. Mindy Quiroz, LFHS and LFU Distributive Education Clubs of America sponsors. Good evening, Mr. President, members of the board, and Dr. Salazar, I'm sorry, not <laughs> Um, this year I had the pleasure of leading the, the DECA, what we call DECA, Distributive Educational Clubs of America. Uh, through a successful year, I was hoping we would have a little bit more of uh, attendees, but it's that time of year, everybody's super busy, uh, so we're going to make this a little short. Um, from the high school campus, today we have Brianna Alex. We also had com uh, competitors. All of these are state qualifiers, including Brianna. Uh, from Los Fresnos United, we have Nicolas Sanchez. We have Antonio Espinosa. Nicolas Valencia. Gilbert Garza, Manuel Bocanegra, and Christian Rodriguez. Thank you very much for your continued support on these young entrepreneurs that are primarily focusing on business management, hospitality and tourism, finance and marketing. Thank you. And if we have any parents for our DECA students in the audience, if you can please stand and be recognized. the proud principal of Los Fresnos High School to introduce the group of students. Good evening, Mr. President, members of the board, and Dr. Salazar. We're going to continue our recognition of some of our best and brightest from Los Fresnos High School. Let me call up to the lectern Mr. Andy Solois, director of music, to introduce some of our finest musicians. Good evening, Mr. President, members of the board, Dr. Salazar. Thank you for the opportunity to recognize a few of our outstanding achievements of our music programs and the students and directors who make these programs successful. We'll begin with the uh, LFHS Choir. This year, the choir received its third consecutive sweepstakes award, which is the most consecutive sweepstakes for the choir in school history. The choir also set a new school record by placing 14 students in Team EA District Choir. In addition, they won Best in Class and the Grand Champion Award at the River City Premier Choral Festival. The choir is represented by Catherine Rios, Cassandra Mendieta, and Sarai Garza Huerta. They are under the direction of Mr. Patrick Graves. If we have any choir parents in the audience, please stand and be recognized. Well, we're going to thank them anyway. this one simple. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the Texas Association of Mariachi Educators 2018 Class 6A State Champions, Mariachi Nuevo Halcón. Each student is also wearing a medal signifying that they were selected as an outstanding performer in the UIL State Mariachi Festival where the group also earned first division rating. The Mariachi is under the direction of Hector Bermea and Rafael Gal Galstein. They are represented by students Fabiola Ahuya, Aleida Alvarez, Luis Contreras, Miranda Cortez, Rolando Cuevas, Yamila de la Rosa, Rolando Esquivel, Gabriela Galsin, Alan Gonzalez, Eduardo Martinez, UC Martinez, Evelyn Reyes, Jacqueline Rostro, Avira Salazar, Dulce Silva, John Sosi, Esmeralda Soto, and Jorge Suarez. If there are any parents of this, these fine students, would you please also stand to be recognized? Once again, thank you for your support and for taking the time to recognize these outstanding music programs and their talented students. At this time, I'll invite up to the lectern our athletic director, Mr. Patrick Brown. Mr. President, members of the board, Dr. Salazar, first of all, congratulations. Saturday was a big day for you, big day for us. Um, that's amazing. I wish I could call myself a doctor. We got a lot of great things going on in our district. 24 of our 25 teams either made the playoffs or made deep runs or had kids go to state. It, it's been a fantastic year and who would have ever thought that I could say we finished second in water polo. Never did I think those words would ever come out of my mouth. But we did and that's how <coughs> special of a district we have and unlike some of the towns around us that are imploding with coaches, um, our school district loses very few and that's because we have the best leadership around and that's, that's truly the way we feel as coaches. And we want to thank you guys for that, for, for being steady for us and for backing us. And, and I think that's why you see guys like Coach Stahlberg around. I think he's been around 57 years, Coach Stahlberg. Okay. Um, something like that, around that area. But it, this is a special place to be, and we have uh, some teams still participating um, in that. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce our girls head track coach, Coach Blackman. I'll adjust the microphone for you. Mr. President, members of the board, Dr. Salazar, thank you guys for having us. I'm going to start by uh, introducing my assistants, Rebecca Valdez. She did boys and girls hurdles. <laughs> Coach Don Snyder, she did boys and girls distance. 
and the birthday girl, Ariel Tortoise. She did Boys and Girls High Jump. And Doug Dahlberg, he does everything. He's disc discus. And now my uh, area qualifiers, senior Nikki Mora, area qualifier, long jump. Senior Giselle Ibada, area qualifier, high jump. Sophomore Ashley Muniz, regional qualifier, discus. Sandra Salazar, junior. She was an area qualifier in the high jump and regional qualifier in the 4x2 relay. Sophomore Cameron Garcia, regional qualifier, 4x2 relay. Her twin sister Kylie Garcia, sophomore, regional qualifier, 4x2 relay. Luisa Cruz, junior. She was a regional qualifier in three events. 100, 100 meter dash, 200 meter dash, and the 4 by 2 relay. And last, Brianna Alex, junior state qualifier in the 100 meter hurdle. And she placed eighth at state this past week in Austin, and we're very proud of her. All the parents of these athletes, please stand and be recognized. We thank you guys for your support and had a great year. Thank you guys. thing about the, our girls track team are almost all of our girls are back next year. It was, it was pretty neat seeing our Los Fresnos logo with the University of Texas running against all these other big teams. They did a great job. Next I'd like to introduce our head boys um, track coach, Coach Jose Horner. Mr. President, members of the board, Dr. Salazar, thank you guys for having us and good evening. Um, regional qualifiers and our area qualifiers. First, we have one present Carlos Mercado. He went to regional this year. He's a senior. Emmanuel Chavez, a sophomore, jumped 12 6 this year in pole vault. Nico Valencia, a qualifier in the 100 and 200 this year, as a sophomore as well. If there's any parents, please stand up. You're recognized. I know how hard it is for you guys to drop these guys off early and come pick them up late. Next team I'd like to introduce, a team that I've followed over the last three years and watched 
um, their growth. I was able to watch them the last two years at regionals. Um, very, very proud of them. Fun girls to watch, and it's and it's it's amazing watching our girls call out other girls for cheating or not placing their divot or whatever. Love it. Love that swagger when I see one of our girls call out a Westlake girl because she didn't fix her divot or call her out on a stroke. And I was very proud to watch these young ladies compete. They they competed with class and um, obviously compete against multiple Division One athletes at this level. So without further ado, Coach Gonzalez. Thank you very much, uh, President, Mr. Superintendent, board members, uh, administrators. Uh, I'd like to uh, introduce you to the back-to-back -back district champs for 32-6A. Uh, we got juniors, uh, Josie Garcia. <laughs> Brianna Munoz. <laughs> Cassie Garcia. Uh, we have Alex Montes. Jasmine Granado, Natalie Barrera, and Gianna Granado. Um, just want to thank you all for giving us an opportunity to represent Los Fresnos uh, to the best of their awesome girls every time. I, I guess I didn't realize how good they were good doing until Coach Brown and I told me. Um, it's not easy giving up or, or getting rid of a one uh, D1 um, athlete. You know, when they graduate, they, they heard a program. I really didn't understand that till after the case. These girls actually ended up scoring better than last year's team, which was an amazing. And I congratulate them and the parents. If you're here, please stand up uh, for all the work they've done. Thank you. Coach Gonzalez, I'm very proud of you. First year I was here, you took 15 minutes. Last year was 10 minutes, and you got it under three minutes. Very proud of you. Just like your golfers, we're trying to lower that every year. Good job. Next, uh, really a special group of seniors that have taken our baseball program to the next level, and our baseball team continues to play. Unfortunately, they use me to flip coins, and I don't ever win flips, obviously. So they're going to play two of the next three games at PSJA versus Vela. And after we win that, we're going to move on to the area uh, as a semifinal Sweet 16 and make history. And I think this baseball team may be playing into the summer after graduation. Um, I, I really feel if they pull together that they're going to have a history-making season. And without further ado, Coach Morales. Coach, just wait a minute. I'm trying to get the image of, of Coach Brown flipping out of my mind. I, just uh, The image right here of you flipping is just play nice. Uh, thank you for having us here tonight. Um, this is back-to-back uh, -back district champs, um, by district champs, area champs. Um, we're playing, like Coach Brown said, we're playing Thursday, Friday, Saturday, so hope you guys can make it out. Uh, number one, Sammy De Leon. Number two, Charles Chapa. Uh, 
number three, Tony Gallegos. Number four, Victor Montemayor. Number five, Sebastian Ledesma. Number six, Johnny Cadengo. Number seven, Ian Danielson. Number eight, George Villafranca. Number nine, Joseph Munoz. Number 10, J.J. Sanchez. Number 11, Lee Trevino. Number 12, Carlos Perez. Number 13, Hugo Sanchez. Number 14, Bryn Ramirez. Number 20, Alex Salas. Number 21, Christian Hernandez. Number 22, Victor Loa. Number 23, Hector Salcedo. And number 30, Jacob Sandoval. Our coaching staff, uh, Patrick Hinsky. <laughs> Alcencio Garza. Alberto Morales. Ruben Rocha. Eben Carmona. And Jeff Hoover. Okay, on, on Thursday, Thursday we'll be playing at PSJ High School at 7 o'clock. Friday we'll be playing in Los Fresnos at 7. And uh, Saturday hopefully we won't have to play, but it's at 2 o'clock at PSJ High School. Uh, I want to thank all the parents that bring them. I know we've had a couple of morning practices with these guys, and they all seem to be here on time. Even a couple of times they beat me because I was out running. But <laughs> 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 counting trash cans, yeah. So uh, if you're here, please stand up.
Dr. Salasad, uh, district reports, item number six. Mr. Mr. Maya, members of the board, we uh, present to you our monthly reports, our financial reports, and at this time we would entertain any questions you might have. Without any questions, then we budget and tax calendar, and we want to remind you that we're scheduling a, a the first budget committee meeting of uh, for the 29th, that would be. Uh, look forward to visiting with you and on our 1819 budget. No questions, anyone? I remember seven public audience. We did have someone sign up. Coach, most of the rules, and you know most of the rules? Okay, all right. That's all right. I want you right here in case I run out of words, because you don't run out of words. And many times, many times they're relevant, but you got people listening, and that's the biggest thing. So I want you to stay right here. If I, if Mr. I Public listen. Audience, you're on the clock. I apologize. <laughs> the board encourages comments from citizens of the district or from district employees, anyone wishing to speak, either as an individual or as a representative of a group, may do so at this time. The board asks that comments pertain to public education issues and be no longer than five minutes. Remember that the board may not discuss or take action on any issues that are not posted on our agenda for tonight's meeting. If an issue mentioned is listed on tonight's agenda, the board will defer discussion until the appropriate time during the meeting. In addition, the board has adopted complaint policies that are designed to secure at the lowest administrative level a prompt and equitable resolution of complaints and concerns. Complaints brought by students or their parents may be heard in accordance with policies FNG legal, FNG local, by employees in accordance with policies DGBA legal, DGBA local, and by citizens in accordance with policy GF local. Each of these processes uh, provides that if a resolution cannot be achieved administratively, the person may appeal uh, the administration decision to the board as a properly posted agenda item. Now, Mr. Garza, members of the board, Dr. Salazar, I have signed up, and public audience, it will, it will be positive. There's, it's really not by accident that our, our meetings are mostly about students and their achievements. Uh, because that's the way you do it, that's the way you demand it gets done, and our meetings usually about the adult side of it. We have our information. It's very quick. It's very concise, and we know what uh, what is in front of us. But you put all these students in front of us, and we are able to take that little bit of time to honor them tonight. We're honoring you. I will keep it short because I don't want to get emotional. You know, I get emotional, and that's that's uh, it's not good. I get like like Coach Brown. I start saying things, and then it's not a good thing. Uh, I know that you've been working very hard at this. We, you don't know how lucky and how honored we feel when we're off at conferences and they see that we're from Los Fedlos. Uh, we, I guess, take pride in the fact that we're, not, that we're just wearing Los Fedlos, but that we're, we're recognized as not the best in Cameron County or in Region 1, but some of the best, if not in just in the state and the country as well. And that is due to your leadership, the people here, and, and the other people that you lead. But yet... The ones that are always first are the kids. So on behalf of uh, the board and this community, I'd like to read this. The Board of Trustees and District Administration are proud to recognize Dr. Gonzalo Salazar for working to achieve a higher level of proficiency in the field of education. April 2018, you demand this from your people, but b more importantly, you demand it from yourself, and you don't do anyone else to a you don't ask someone else to do something that you have not done or not willing to do, and put in the time and effort. Uh, congratulations on all your hard work, and I'm glad it's finished.
We still have about three minutes left if there are any comments from the rest of the board. Yes, you may. Um, Mr. Mr. Mayor, members of the board, um, I first would like to thank everyone. I'd like to thank you for the opportunity that I was given to serve in Los Fresnos. I started here as an assistant principal 18 years and maybe 30 pounds ago. <coughs> and um, I've worked alongside some very talented people. Um, who are committed. I shouldn't have started, but now I'm going to finish. <coughs> I'm committed to doing right by the children of this community. And um, every day I, I get to learn from them. Every day in this position you learn that you can't do it alone. And that above all you need... <coughs> Above all, you need God's, God's guidance. And, and uh, again, I can't say enough about what we're able to achieve in, in a community when, when we all work with a, a single vision and when we commit, like I said, to doing what's right uh, for the children. What our kids are able to accomplish has less to do with me and, and more to do with what we can achieve collectively if we hold high expectations and and we hold each other accountable. Um, the higher level of proficiency, this objective of achieving a higher level of proficiency is something I saw on someone's resume when I first enrolled in school and I thought, you know, that's, that's what I want to do. I want to work every day to achieve a higher level of proficiency in a challenging position in the field of education. And I'm happy to tell you that it is no it is no coincidence that over a third of our teachers have advanced degrees. Everyone in this community understands what's at stake and what kids can achieve through, through education. 78% of the kids that we serve come from households where, from economically disadvantaged households. And it's <coughs> only through education that we are going to equip them with the tools that they need succeed. We've talked about it in the last several weeks that you know, ed education doesn't merely serve the public, it produces the public. And the role that each of us play in the education of our children is an, is an important one. And we will continue to strive, and I make a commitment here today, to continue to try to reach a higher level of proficiency in this challenging position in the field of education and to make you all very proud. Thank you for, for the opportunity to serve here. Can we get on with the meeting now? It's I have noticed it in the and and I got to see the picture of you coming across the stage and you don't seem to take my phone calls anymore. I don't know if it's just <laughs> It, 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 I'll go back to school too, and maybe that, that's where I need it. Congratulations! I know that we laugh a, uh, a lot about it, but congratulations. Okay, moving to consent agenda, we have two items listed on the consent agenda. Uh, at this point, I will entertain a motion on consent agenda as as posted, or if a board member uh, would like to pull one of the two items for discussion, we can do that as well. Go ahead, Mr. Good. Mr. Castillo. Mr. President, I make a motion that we approve consent item as listed. We have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second it, sir. Ms. Peterson, we have a motion and a second to approve consent uh, the uh, consent agenda items one and two as posted. All those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. Unanimous, 6-0. Action item, action item number one, discuss and take action to approve an agreement with the Region 1 Education Service 60 Center to participate, excuse me, uh, uh, the 60 is just a line there, uh, Education Service Center to participate in the One Regional Interconnection Optical Network, or uh, Orion, consortium pending subsequent approval of a memorandum of understanding. Do we have a motion? Go ahead, Ms. Garcia. 
Mr. Amaya, I move to approve the agreement with Region 1 to participate in the One Regional Interconnection Optical Network, Orion Consortium, subject to an interlocal agreement with a Memorandum of Understanding, and authorize the superintendent to enter into the interlocal agreement upon approval from our legal counsel. We have a motion. Is there a second? Mr. Garza? I have a motion and a second to uh, take a, to approve an agreement with the Regional One Education Service Center to participate in the One Regional Interconnection Optical Network Orion Consortium pending subsequent approval of a memorandum of understanding and we to uh, allow our superintendent to continue discussion with legal counsel on this item. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Is there a discussion? There being no discussion, we have a motion and a second to approve item number one. All those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. It is unanimous. Item number two, discuss and take action to approve employment contracts for the 2018-2019 school year. Campus professional staff contract recommendations. Do we have uh, do we have a motion? Mr. Farias? I move Sir? that we uh, approve the employment contracts for the 2018-2019 school year. The campus professional staff uh, recommendations. Is there a second? Mr. Garza? We have a motion and a second to approve employment contracts for the 2018-2019 school year. This is item A, campus professional staff contract recommendations. Discussion? There is no discussion. We have a motion and a second to approve uh, action item number two. All those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. It is unanimous. Action item three, discuss and take action to approve the superintendent's recommendation, personnel recommendations for the following positions for the 2018-2019 school year. A, teachers. B, speech language pathologist assistant. C, diagnosticians. D, special services coordinator. Is there a motion? Ms. Garcia? I so move. Second. Mr. Garza? Discussion? We have no discussion. We have a motion and a second to approve the superintendent's personnel recommendations for the p uh, for the following positions for the 2018-2019 school year. A, teachers. B, speech language pathologist assistant. C, diagnosticians. And D, special service coordinator. All those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. The candidate is unanimous. Yes, sir. It's to you, I believe. Oh, do we have any of our new... Oh, good, I'm sorry. I apologize. Do any of our new Falcons, would you please stand? <laughs> Congratulations. Welcome. I hope, you were, I hope you were able to be here at the, uh, at the beginning when our students were here and our teachers and everybody was uh, presenting. You get to see just a piece of... Uh, what the Falcons are about, and I'm, I'm, I'm at maybe we have some current Falcons that have been Falcons all the time, and now they're just going to be in a different position. So congratulations. We'll be out in just a second. Now it's to you, Ms. Dr. Salazar. Mr. Meyer, members of the board, um, we continue this week with state assessments at our elementary and middle schools, and on Thursday, May 24th, is the last day of school. We have early dismissal for elementary students at noon, middle school at 1, and high school at 1.10. Friday is a teacher work day and commencement ceremony is May 26th at Rio Aguilar Memorial. On Monday, May 30th is the first day of summer school and we start all over again. Those are all the announcements we have at this time. Okay. All the announcements? That's it. It is uh, 6.57 and the meeting is adjourned. <laughs>